ready to experience the mystical maze of living history called Bundelkhand. While the Bundelis have tamed the rocks and the land, its fiercely brave and valiant souls have remained unconquered till date. Bundelkhand fascinates even as it enchants the traveller with its rugged and unconquerable terrain. Its mystical countenance invites you to enter a forbidden, virginal territory whose past is as mysterious as its present. The land of the pugnacious warrior clans, it is also an enticing land of cultural diversity. You can enjoy the architectural magnificence of the Jain era, rubbing shoulders with traces of Buddhist grandeur, interspersed with the best of Hindu edifices. How Bundelkhand got its name is shrouded in mystery. At various points in time, it was called Jija Hauti and Bundela Khand. Like the mystery shrouding the name, its people too remain an enigma. We decide to embark on a six-day exploratory trip and this road trip will unravel shades of the magical, mystical land that now holds us all in its thrall. On day one of our six-day sojourn, we hit the ground running as we enter the gateway to Bundelkhand. Its warrior status is being exemplified by the Queen of Chansi Rani Lakshmi Bai, who has become a metaphor for bravery. Her unmatched resistance to the British forces during the First War of Independence in 1857 is the stuff of legends. The majestic Chansi fort built by Raja Bir Singh Judev in 1613, is silent witness to the fierce battle led by Rani Lakshmi Bai. She was known as Greased Lightning for her unmatched valour. As we wend our way out of Chasi, the celebration of the indomitable human spirit continued unabated. We reach the iconic Barwa Saga fort and lake that stands testimony to Bundeli heritage. It is merely 21 kilometers from Chasi and is named after the Barwa Saga Tal a huge man-made lake built by Raja Udit Singh some 270 years ago. As the sun dips, playing hide-and-seek with the rugged terrain, the mystery of Bundel Khand deepens as we drive out of Barwa Sagar. At Jareka Mutt, we pierce the heart of Pundelkhand. In front of us stands the imposing ruins of two ancient Chandela granite temples. The reliefs and sculptures on the temple walls are a sight to behold. After a quick breakfast at the state tourist bungalow, we head for the Regal Lake. Barely two kilometers down the winding road is a resplendent lake surrounded by low sun-kissed hills. The Garmau Jeel is a local hot spot and a great rendezvous point for lovers, both young and old. A gorgeous man-made site beholds us as we reach the quaintly named Sukhwadukwa area. Here, 
we can see the majestic 1 km long waterfall from a tunnel below the Betwa river. Such a man-made marvel is hard to find anywhere else. Mata Tila Water Reservoir Built in 1953, the dam was built to tame River Betwa and to generate electricity. Barely 10 kilometers down the road, you see the grand Tal Behat Fort. As your eyes soak in the beauty of the Mansarovar Lake, the resplendent fort of Mardan Singh in the middle makes for a heady feast. Further down, you can see the grand edifice of the Hazaria Mahadev Temple. As the evening sun casts its silvery shadow on the lakes and ponds, we are in for another divine destination. The air is pure and pristine and it is the third day of our exploration. If Chasi held us spellbound, Devgar in Lalitpur district is the cultural culmination of Bundelkhand. Situated on the right bank of the Betwa river, the town stands tall at the western end of the Lalitpur range. The Devgar monuments can be categorized based on their location at valley and fort temples. They are usually built with sandstones of brick red color. But the grandest sight to caress your sensibilities is the Dashavatara temple. The side and back walls of the temple depict carved panels related to several facets of Lord Vishnu's life. By now, it is getting to be late evening, but the hunger to soak in Bundelkhand persists. If the Hindu temples cast a spell on us, the Jain temples lent a classical sweep. Built from the post-Gupta times to till the 17th century, these symphonies in stone have panels depicting scenes from Jain mythology. As we see the long sweep of rock-cut caves, we are in for another Buddhist cultural shock. The inhospitable terrain punctuated by the Buddhist architecture leaves us gasping for more. These Buddhist caves were discovered by a local historian only in recent times. If that were not feast enough for the eyes, the presence of the near-extinct white-built vultures lent a heady aura to the atmosphere. The night skies lull us into sleep. As we get ready to hit the roads again, we hear the earthy refrains of the local folk music, raw but resonating with life. The area is replete with the tales of brothers Ala and Udal, two warrior chieftains and folk heroes of Mahoka. And its maze of magnificent man-made maze of serene lakes make for a grand visual sweep. Another structural edifice that entices the eyes is the famous Lord Shiva temple 
in Kakramat near the Madan Sagar Lake. Close by at Rahilya Sagar Lake is the arresting site of the once famous Sun Temple, only the second of its kind after Konark in Odisha. While the architectural ode to the sun god lies in ruins, it is still a site that transports us to the realms of aesthetic splendor. The fifth morning greets us with its mystical serenity. We enter the citadel of Bundelkhand known as Kalinja. The town and the fort have had tremendous strategic importance down the ages. As we drive down, we see the high rampart walls and set sight on only three of the four gateways that originally existed. These are popularly known as the Kamta Dwar, Panna Dwar and Hira Dwar. Etymologically speaking, Kalinja means the destroyer of time in Sanskrit. Kal is time, while Jar stands for destruction. Legend says that after the churning of the ocean, the Hindu god Lord Shiva drank the poison and his throat became blue. It is said Lord Shiva came to Kalinja and overcame time which means Kal, that is, he achieved victory over death. This is the reason why the Shiv temple here is called Nilkant. Another grand sight that awaits us is a huge monolith. It is a 17 feet broad and 24 feet tall statue of Karl Bhairav or time immemorial ornamented with a garland of skulls. The intricate reliefs, the astounding rock faces and the heady natural aroma leave us spellbound. The climax of our journey at Chitrakoot is a divine experience. By the time we set out, it is late morning. And as we enter the temple town, we are greeted with the strains of bhajans that waft through the air. Chitrakoot literally means the hill of many wonders. Its spiritual legacy stretches back to legendary ages. It was in these deep forests that Ram and Sita spent 11 of their 14 years of exile. It was here that the great sage Atri and Sati Anusuya meditated. It is a tranquil and divine retreat by River Mandakini. And the town has mythical and religious overtones that are hard to live down. Set in sylvan surroundings, the area boasts of innumerable temples and shrines. It is indeed a heaven both for spiritual seekers and adventurous tourists like us. One of the high points is Ram Ghat, where the great poet Tulsi Das is said to have crafted the famous epic Ram Charit Manas. Not far from the Ram Ghat, the verdant green and the long winding narrow roads lead us to the magic and lure of the Gupt Godavari. 
as we enter the narrow passage, we see a tiny rivulet gurgling into a tank at the end of an underground cave. It is believed that Lord Ram and his brother Lakshman held court in the cave, which has natural throne-like rocks. Around its base lie 56 small temples related to the Ramayan story. As we drive down the asphalt stretch, Bundel Khan's untamed spirit lingers on and punches the evening air. Finally, as we head back to Jhasi, we soak in the raw and earthy culture that smells of the soil on this land and feels fresh and virginal. Our eyes are caught in a time warp, even as the earthy and heady Allah and Udal folk song rings in our ears. As we get a final glimpse of the vigorous Rai dance, we can feel the essence of the untamed spirit of Bundel Khand. In a land where you cannot distinguish between the dancer and the dance, come, untame yourself.